Hey guys, welcome to the virtual experience channel. So this is a 360 video of Casilo di San Marcos, which is a fort and it is built by Spaniards. So I'll be telling the history of this fort throughout my video. And since this is a 360 video, make sure you navigate using your virtual reality headset or your mouse pointer or if you are using your mobile phone with your fingers and have a 360 degree view of this beautiful fort. Casilo di San Marcos means St. Mark's Castle and this is the oldest masonry fort in the continental United States. It is located on the western shore of Matanzas Bay in the city of St. Augustine, Florida. So Casilo de San Marcos was for many years the northernmost outpost of Spain's vast New World Empire. It is the oldest masonry fort and the best preserved example of a Spanish colonial fortification in the continental United States. It anchored East Florida's defenses which extended northward to the St. Mary's River and westward to the St. John's and southward to Fort Matanzas. It protected St. Augustine from pirate raids and from Spain's major rival, Great Britain, during a time when Florida, Georgia, Carolina coastline was an explosive international battleground. The root of the Casillo's history reached back to the years just after Christopher Columbus' final transatlantic voyage when the Spanish fighters carved out a vast and wealthy overseas empire for Spain, first in the Caribbean and then in the mainlands of Mexico, Central America, Colombia, Venezuela and Peru. This fort was designed by the Spanish engineer Ignacio Daza with construction beginning in 1672, 107 years of the city's founding by Spanish admiral and the conqueror Pedro Mendez when Florida was part of Spanish empire. The fort's construction was ordered by Governor Francisco de la Guerre after a ride by the English privateer Robert Searles in 1668 that destroyed much of St. Augustine and damaged the existing wooden fort. Work proceeded under the administration of Guerre's successor, Manuel de Sendoria in 1671. Though built in part by black slaves owned by Spanish, the fort later served as one of the first entry points of fugitive slaves from British North America into Spanish Florida, where they were freed by the colonial authorities. This quickly led to the first free black settlement in the future United States. So now let's purchase a ticket for this one and see the interior of Casilo de San Marcos. Self today or anyone else driving? Just me. You're not active or prior military no permit disability? $15, you can tap or insert your card. How long is it open? Uh, till 5.15, you have about mm, 42 minutes, which okay. 45 is about average. Pass is also good for seven days, so if you want to come back, you can always show your. Oh, own. that's good. Yep. That's I would good. come back in the morning because the next two days are going to be really busy. So if you want to come back, come back at nine a.m. Okay, All thank right. you. Have a good day. So now I am walking through Ravelin. So basically, Ravelin is a triangular outer work that shielded the fort's only entrance from enemy fire. It was never finished as planned. If completed, the outer wall would have been five feet higher, 
with openings for cannons and powder magazine. The Ravelin Bridge would have been secured each night at sunset. The main bridge was secured only when the fort was under attack. Now I will be entering the Plaza de Armas area where there are storage rooms and uh, despite their prison like appearance the rooms around the Plaza de Armas or central courtyard were, were storage areas. Here the Spanish stockpiled gunpowder, ammunition, weapons, lumber, tools and food like dried beans, rice, flour and corn. Since Saint Augustine was not self sorry, since Saint Augustine was not self sufficient, such stockpiles of food and ammunition were an important part of the town's defense during a siege. And there are some guard rooms over there. The soldiers that lived in the town with their families and came to the fort to stand a rotating guard duty, which lasted usually 24 hours, used these guard rooms. At such times they slept and prepared their meals in these rooms. The large fireplaces offered warmth on chilly days and provided an area for cooking. The platforms attached to the walls served as beds for the soldiers. Okay, now I'll be walking up towards the Saint Ag San Augustine Bastion where you can see the cannons and everything. The National Park Service of uh, United States Department of the Interior did a great job of preserving this fort, I have to say. There were, the history is written all over the place and uh, anyone interested in history should visit this place. Also, if you enjoy the nature and fun, you want to have fun, even if you don't like history, you have to still visit it because you will get interested in the history. So now, now I'm on the San Carlos Bastion area. There are like four different areas. They are like St. Carlos Bastion, St. Augustine Bastion, St. Pablo Bastion, and St. Pedro Bastion. Now a little bit of history. In 1513, Spain claimed Florida through the expedition of Ponce de Leon. But France gained the first foothold there by establishing Fort Caroline on the St. John's River in 1564. Seeing this as both a challenge to Spain's claim and a menace to the treasure fleets, King Philip II sent an expedition under Don Pedro to eliminate the French threat and establish settlements in Florida. It arrived at the mouth of the St. John's River in September 1565. After attempting unsuccessfully to board the French ships anchored there, Mendes sailed to a harbor farther south and established St. Augustine as a base for further operations. Almost immediately, a French fleet sailed south to attack, but the ships were driven southward and wrecked by a violent storm and the mission failed. Realizing that Fort Caroline would be lightly guarded, the Spaniards marched north, captured the fort and executed most of the inhabitants. The same fate befell survivors from the French fleet, whom the Spaniards captured and killed at an inlet 14 miles south of St. Augustine. This episode gave a name to the area, Matanzas, Spanish for slaughters. England became Spain's next contender for Florida. The Spanish had watched the English 
warily ever since Sir Francis Drake attacked and burned St. Augustine in 1586. They became even more watchful after Englishmen settled Jamestown in 1607. British pirates sacked St. Augustine in 1668 and this hit and run attack followed by the English settlement of Charleston in 1670 caused Spain to build the Castillo de San Marcos. Begun in 1672 and completed by 1695, the Castillo replaced nine successive wooden fortifications that had protected St. Augustine since its founding. The fort's commanding location on the west bank of Madanzas Bay allowed its guns to protect not only the harbour entrance but the ground to the north against a land attack. The Casillo's baptism of fire came in 1702 during the War of Spanish Succession when the English occupied St. Augustine and unsuccessfully besieged the fort for 50 days. The English burned the town before they left, but Casillo emerged unscratched, thereby making it a symbolic link between the old St. Augustine of 1565 and the new city that rose from the ashes. To strengthen the defences, the Spanish erected new earthwork lines on the north and west side of St. Augustine, thus making it a walled city. Madanza's inlet, however, was still unfortified when General James Oglethorpe's British troops from Fort Frederica in Georgia attacked St. Augustine in 1740. Again, the Casillo was besieged and blocked, but the Spanish did not waver during the 27-day British bombardment. The attack also taught the Spanish the strategic value of Matanzas Inlet and the need for a strong outpost there. Consequently, in 1742, they completed the present Kokinawa Tower. In 1763, as an outcome of the Seven Years' War, Spain ceded Florida to Great Britain in return for La Habana, Cuba. The British garrisoned Matanzas and strengthened the Casillo, holding the two forts through American Revolution. The Treaty of Paris of 1783, which ended the war, returned Florida to Spain. Spain held Florida until 1821, when serious Spanish-American tensions led to its secession to the United States. The Americans renamed the Casillo Fort Marion and used it to house Indian prisoners during the Seminole War of 1835 to 1842. Confederate troops occupied it briefly during the Civil War and Indians captured in the Western military campaigns were held there later on. It was last used during the Spanish-American War as a military prison. So let's talk to one of these rangers who work here. They were pretty helpful and they know a good bit of history about this fort. Yeah, sure. yeah so... Is um, Laura Goffer? Yes, yep, exactly. Um, so our cannons that we use over here um, for cannon demonstrations sometimes, mm -hmm. um, those are cannons that would be able to shoot as far as the lighthouse over on Anastasia Island. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then what's nice is you can see that those cannons are a lot smaller than a lot of our cannons. So some of these cannons had a range of up to three miles. Um, so there was a lot of firepower at the top of the fort should a ship or any sort of troops arrive. So really well defended. It never fell in battle because of that. Oh, that's great, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, how far is the lighthouse? It's like, a mile and a half from here. Mile and a half. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very yeah, much. Of course, you're welcome. So, hope you all had fun watching this beautiful castle of De Saint Marcos and knowing the history of this castle.
so if you enjoy this episode please make sure you subscribe share with your friends and family so that i can keep creating more videos like this and hope you enjoy the scenic view of saint augustine from castello di saint marcos and i will see you all in the next episode